So let's get started on the gameplay right here. And let's reduce the volume a bit. So right now CR Zoom is looking to land in dirty docks. Now this is a very good landing spot, has plenty of metal. There's some fishing spots around in this area over here and uh, this side of the map. Lots of fishing spots easily enable you to play flopper if the need rises in endgame which might be the case for TR Doom later on in this video. Alright let's get back into this. So first already he's already scouting who's landing where and he knows that one person he can contest it by one other person landing dirty dogs. Now unfortunately Tia Doom gets tagged for 42 off spawn and this could have proved very fatal for him and this is a small error on his part. He did deploy the glider really soon enough and that gave the opponent immense amounts of time to uh, land a shot on him. But he's doing something very different here, right? So he gets shot by this player here. As, and instead of trying to land onto the the um, little um, construction stand over by this area, right? He's trying to create distance between him and his opponent. So big, uh, his hitbox becomes smaller and he's a bit tougher to hit for his opponent. So now this is a really smart move to incorporate when making uh, a landing. So let's say if you're getting tagged out of the sky, rotate away from your opponent as coming close to them as your hitbox sizes decreases in the long range and even with a really good aim it becomes very, it becomes very, very difficult to track you and finish you off at that range. Now over here he gets off very luckily as and as you can see he's in no hurry to land he just wants to create distance between him and the opponent. He now lands and fortunately finds a med kit on his first chest which is good for him. And now he's back to good health. He's on 150 health. He has a shoddy, an SMG, and a spare mini after he pops the two minis for shield. And he's looking pretty good on mass for early game too. Now he knows there's another player, and we can see the other player on the mini map right here. This player is right here, and this player is probably gonna take in the rotation, go around this side, and come in here. As we will see later. Now this is a good rotation and TR Doom having a lot of experience tends to keep his activities minimized to this side alone which allows him to get himself set up for an early game fight if necessary. Finds more minis. And now he's already at maximum materials and he's looking pretty good at metal too. Now he sees cones placing right there, right? There's a bit of a building animation and he knows someone is there. So he's gonna be extra careful playing around that because here's the thing, he's on 90 ping and that player might be on lower ping than him. Now it's a risk he can't afford to take and he doesn't want to take. So let's see how he handles having a person come really close within a couple of tiles of his safe space. Two 
choose is to pick up the harpoon which is a really good idea, find the big pot with the ammunition boxes, notice how none of the pro players of any region leave the ammo boxes behind because in high end lobby storm surge is key. Now it may not be the case in this game but storm surge will become a huge factor in your higher tier scrim levels. Back on full health, has two harpoons now, sees a llama in front of him, right? And now sees his other player just three tiles away from him, right? And now he wants to sit still, lie and wait. He wants to line up a laser. Unfortunately, he only hits him for 31. Had this been like something like 66, 33, TR Doom might have pushed. But a 31 damage shot is not simply not worth the effort. Because A, RZ Devil, here is going to get the Llama. The Llama guarantees at least a thousand mats for free compared to his materials which is going to be 850 and plus RG Devil might be zero ping yada 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 he might have a spaz multiple different factors all in all TR Doom makes a decision to not take this fight at all he decides hey it's not worth it I can't win that carries two harpoons instead of one interesting choice to say the least now this comes into play because i think he plans on fishing up a bit ahead and that would be good for him because the flops he finds will save his life in the end of the game so as you go higher as you go higher in high tier lobbies you realize that it's a lot about making it to end game rather than actually taking all spawn fights early. Now we're all used to W King in arena and that's a good practice to get better at fighting. But sometimes the format alone demands that you fight at the right places. If he were to take this fight right now, it could go terribly wrong for him. And if it doesn't go terribly wrong for him, it would leave him with little to nothing shield because none of them have big pots anyway. And it will leave them in scam in scambles because they're both good players they both made to platform cash cup round two and they both know how to build right so this will not be a fair fight in favor of doom even if he plans on taking it so he decides to disengage from it so next time don't be so hesitant to disengage from fights if you think you're not gonna win them right just because you have all blue loadout does not mean that your opponent cannot have all purple loadout you never know, maybe they have the best RNG in the game. Now in a later word review, I'll discover how you can perform without having to, you know, how you can perform with a very good loot. And in that video, we'll be looking at ASMR Kreitokun, who came first in the FNCS Invitationals with a huge lead over 5th place. So right now, he's, he's creating distance. Notice how both the players met somewhere around this area, right? Somewhere around this little uh, area right here, right? And how they both disengage. Um, the RZ Devil, he went this way, while uh, TR Doom went this way. Now this is a very good way of creating space between you and your opponent which enables them to effectively follow up on uh, damage done to you. Now let's say if they if they get a if he gets a dink off on you, had they not disengaged and had they just been sitting in a close proximity, right? That fight would have been very easy for Devil here to win. But since they've created space between each other, it allows Doom to disengage, use the water to rotate at the dead zone. Okay, um, delete. Okay, delete. Let's go back here. Let me get a glass of water.
Alright, so the reason why I do want to go for the Llama in spite of decent math with A, it would save him and a lot of time which he's spending now farming, right? Which he could have used to get into better positioning in zone. Because in end games, it doesn't matter how much, how skilled you are, how many wagers you've won, how good you are at box fighting, how fast your edits are. It's about who's at the right positioning at the right time. Pull some ammo for himself here. Sees two fishing spots like I mentioned before. And these fishing spots can be key in our in enabling him to make it to endgame. Unfortunately, they're only single player keys, single use spots. There's a slurp fish there. Does not take it. Interesting choice. It's because the slurp fish has a maximum stack size of three, while well, compared to floppers. And the thing is, uh, Slurfish also heals for shield. But the the thing is, uh, our our player Doom here does not plan on taking any fights at all because he will be at a serious disadvantage if he takes any fights at all. Now, if you go back a while, right, and I'll turn up the volume a bit. I think you can hear them, hear their footsteps. See, right here they can hear each other's footsteps and that's why they build walls to indicate that they do not want to take this fight or do not want to exchange tags at all and notice just how he's creating distance while keeping an eye on devil right here right they went from being right next to each other to being far apart again and this is a concept like a lot of players struggle with they, for they forget to create space Right? It's one thing to disengage and it's another thing to disengage while creating space between you and the opponent. Fine, just stack a minis over there. Very nice, it's looking pretty good on loot. Could use more floppers, but that is just how lucky he gets with his fishing um, spots and stuff. Realizes that Devil here has rotated away, makes the call to upgrade his gun to a purple scar, and this would be a very important decision later. Now, you might ask why? Because in these high level lobbies, right, there is a risk of storm surge and the and if he gets good positioning and that's what he relies on as a high playing player you need high paying player you need to realize fair you cannot take a fair fight you need to set yourself up for every advantage you can get and if he can get a kill by just spraying someone since the scar has literally i think more than 50% faster fire rate than the m16 the blue uh, um, AR, it's worth the upgrade because it will allow him to get A, Storm Surge tags, B, it will allow him to be able to finish fights a lot faster because he will have the advantage in the Assault Rifle category, C, he, if, he get, if he positions himself well, he'll have a lot easier time just beaming players out of the sky. Notice how he does not upgrade his purple tag here too. And there's a reason behind this. And the reason is that as a pro as a high ping player, right? Essentially you want to avoid fights that result in box fights because attack is good in box fights, not so good in build fights, because attack is a very close range fight, and if you can get close to them, in order to get close to a player you need peace control and a bunch of other factors that come into thing. And the thing is the matter of the fact is when you're high ping. You're just not going to be taking a lot of shotgun fights. You'll be playing placement, you'll be playing positioning, you'll be playing unfair double dings and stuff. Shotguns are like your least priority, but you should have a decent shotgun. At least a blue shotgun is at a minimum. Let me just 
just drink some more water here. All right, so now he's farming up. Let's let's move a bit ahead and let's look at the rotation. Right, so he's rotating a bit far ahead, right? And he, our boy started around here, right? And he's rotated to the right side. Now, the battle bus initially, right? If you go back, came from around retail to um Okay, 831, where is the map here? Right, it came from around retail to the shock, right? So, you already know this is going to be the congested side of the zone, right? Because the thing is the map is cut from retail to the shark and there's like a lot of POIs here. You have the rig, you have holly, you have sweaty, you have shark. Right, so as you can tell, this side is very congested. Right, and then you also have this side, but they get zoned, so it's not as congested as compared to this side. Like, look at how, look at the close proximities here. There's like a couple of box fights going on right here, where right here. Right, so this is this is the uh, um, packed. What is it called? Packed side of zone. Right, and where um, our our boy Doom is rotating from. Is that side of the zone right because there's a lot of space here huge gap of players only two players in that huge of an area and right here you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine nine players in the same area right so this is dead zone this is stacked right so this will allow him to be able to rotate a bit more in and ideally, let's look at his positioning, how, how he proceeds to position himself so that he can set himself up for endgame. He's just rotating in because he knows the right side of the zone around here. There's a only a couple other players. There's a guy right here, right? So that's probably the person from Craggy. He knows to his left there's only one guy, and he knows that if there were more, they would probably shoot at each other for tags, but they don't. So that means there's only one guy. So he's taking the mid ground rotate right here. So at this point, most players would take this hill and base up right here since it's less contested and everything. But what Doom does here, right, he just, he makes a very smart play and he decides to base up right ahead over there. Now you might question the decision because, oh my god, but doesn't he see this like one guy there, now uh, one guy there, now why would he do that? Well. If you look at zone right this is edge zone and there's no point boxing up at the edge of zone because you are not likely to get zone it's like a very small um well it's a very slim chance of getting zone right there 
right so you want to base up somewhere like center zone where the players are not too aggressive but not too many too and frenzy is the perfect place for that So right now he's basing up. Let's move a bit more ahead once he's done basing up. Somewhere around. So now a lot of you might a lot of you guys might think, hey, why isn't he like, you know, just uh why did he build uh these walls? Why isn't he going one more up and then peeking? Now the thing is, wood can be easily shot out and he does not want to get accidentally beamed because a lot of these players know that if they see a cone, they know there's probably someone sitting at the bottom of it. That's why he builds these wooden walls around him to prevent himself from getting accidentally dinged when someone is shooting at the cone. You know, just in case. So right now he's gathering intel. He's looking at which side is congested and which side is dead. Right, and you know there's, there's a player in front of him. See, now, notice how like had he been on the edge of zone, right about that house over there, he would have been caught and he would have to rotate in. Then there would be this guy to look at him, this guy to look at him, this guy and this guy. Right, one, two, three, four. Right? And although that would have saved him a lot on wood, he just came here and got the same results anyway, but with better positioning. Right? So right now he builds with metal and the reason why he does this is that metal prevents you from being a primary focus target. So in end games it's all about uh, getting third parties, right? So if someone makes a mistake and builds in wood and somebody does like a heavy snipe and gets like a dink off and people hear like the crack, uh, cracking noise of a shield crack, right? So they shoot at that person, the person probably gets service sprayed and they die. And that's just unfortunate right but when you build with metal right it becomes a lot tougher and only heavy snipes can break your metal structure in one try right so even rpgs take one can tank or one uh even metal metal can tank even one rocket so that in itself prevents you from getting service braid Now this is a classic peak that a lot of pro players exercise because the thing is if they if their cone gets shot out it quickly allows them to back into a corner and then go and heal. But this also allows them to peek aggressively and shoot even shoot at someone who is in the air.
right so here I pull out the map right and as we can see here right so our gamer guy is right here right about right here right so and this side is going to be a very congested side and notice how like on high ping he's not as likely to get server sprayed because he's on the dead side of zone and this is really good positioning on his part So right now there's a supply drop coming, right? And he knows it's right in front of him. And he just goes and risks it for the biscuit, right? And supply drop comes down. He makes sure to farm the tree, right? And to like send off like a warning signal that, hey, this is my supply drop, better back off, right? Right, and he gets the golden spaz, and now he's looking really good for end game. There's a bit pop. There's a big pot that he could bring up to his lair, but I don't think he will, just because he is not in need of it right now. But I clear. I see a player right now that would clearly kill for a big pot. <laughs> So right now he he sees that zone is a bit far away, so he's uh he's not at the stage where he wants to use a launch pad because if you look at map right, if you remember how the map was looking like, uh I'll complete a circle here right, and um this this entire region this side of the region is really stacked compared to this his side of it, right? And if he were to launch, he would get beamed out of sky by at least five different players and no matter how good your glider is or how much you paid for in the item shop nothing's gonna save you from five players spraying at you at the same time okay so yeah so right now is not a good time to launch so he's looking for someone to make an early rotation using their mats and then so he can just use minimal mass and rotate behind their cover once they've rotated through so right now nobody's gonna really rotate apart from Jakey here. All right, so he tries to go for a free rotate, but then realizes that Jakey is still up there waiting, and he does not want to push that player and does not want to pressure him into making place so he just sits there and wait for him now right now he's going for storm surge tags he gets like a nice laser off now imagine this with the green ar now that would have hit him for 50 that would have hit him for 52 and that's a damage difference of at least 20 that's one entire mini Right, so you see, he hears from his audio that Jakey ahead has ro already rotated and is using Jakey's builds to rotate through. So Jakey's using a bit of his hard mats. He's facing all the fire from the stack side of the zone like I mentioned before. Right, so this side of the zone really stacked and he's facing all the flak for being the first one to rotate in. But Doom here, he's just chilling in the back. He's just piggybacking on his mats and rotating. That's a good call because right now Doom needs to play for placement. He cannot frag off because he does not have low ping. Right? So he needs to play placement and he needs mats to play placement. So he's doing a really good job conserving his mats right now and making smart rotates. Now you might ask what would uh, what should uh, Doom should what Doom should have done had JK not uh, gone ahead, right? So he could have gone around the left side and then piggybacked off this guy's rotate or he could have rotated in even from the, even further left like he was here you could rotate around this side right and piggyback on either this person's uh rotate or this person's see because the thing is he needs to save mats right and the corn stalks here like this corn stalk patch of corn stalk here and this patch of corn stalk provide a really good cover for him to rotate through so 
I rotation wise, I think it was a good call that Jakey moved ahead and uh, Doom followed through that. All right, let's continue watching. Right, so he's almost in and this is kind of like a semi tarp that he can that uh, doom here can use right and he's careful to block off the top right right because he knows that the left side because he knows that the left side of the map uh, the left uh, side of the zone right here to his left which is his direction right they're busy fighting amongst themselves to look at him right now so he wants to cover himself from the teams up top here and up top here because he does not want to get lasered by them because he saw dna f9 a laser jakey for 30 damage and he does not want that because he does not have big heals he only has minis and floppers and he does not want to be forced to use him early on okay let me just clear this out Right, so now he's almost in and now he's completely in right and now you realize that now most players would chill, just chill here they're like yeah we're in we're chilling but notice how he goes to branch out and go one up right because the thing is you want to fight on favorable terrain and then when half your boxes lair is inside the ground that's not favorable for you you can't place cones you can't utilize uh, effective stair edits and stuff like that so he does not take that and instead he just goes one layer up uses his metal and notice how he's never actually jumping up and building he's placing a cone and he's placing builds through the cone so as to never get shot right because it only takes a peak of one second to get dinged and then get service sprayed and when you're in hyping you cannot hold against a service spray right when you get service sprayed you're almost almost always dead Right, so he wants to look. F he wants to hold Jiraiya here that's rotating in. But after getting no tags at all, he decides it's not really worth it. And that's a good thing. That's a thing that differenti differentiates the pros from your average uh, good screamer, right? The good screamer sometimes tunnel vision on getting kills, right? Just because they're outside zone does not mean. They're ready to be focused down and spent ammo on right sometimes you need to look for opportunities elsewhere right end game is about optimizing your opportunities for yourself you don't want to take the hard fight where you spray the person with like 200 bullets and you burn them out of mats then then once you spray them someone just comes in and takes your kill and your point and some other places harpoon it right you don't want to work too hard for your kills. You want to work sufficiently hard, but you do not want to take a full-fledged fight. So, Doom in a bit of a dilemma here. He doesn't place the floor here, and nobody really takes the cone over here. Right, and now he's stuck here. Now, had uh, MES Obito, who was fighting with the who was the circus skin early on, noticed that someone was in the cone, this would have been an entirely different story because the floor denies uh, there was a really good piece control by MES Obito had he known that uh, there was someone below because at piece control. With a cone and a floor below, you can just hold the floor. MACB is on 50 ping, Doom is on 90. He can hold the floor forever. Right, so he just naturally does not want to take this fight. And he just... Just... Wants to like look for another angle or another fight that he can third party in. He does not want to participate in this mini build battle inside. Right, and right here... He gets half in half out and that is very lucky right now had he gone into center zone right which most people might consider doing it's not the smartest thing to do because you'll always never get zone yeah so uh we never want to take this 
Right, so he knows Jiraiya here is weak from his fight earlier with Obito and he knows that someone else third party the fight with Obito. So he wants to third party on that. Now he's looking for Jiraiya but he doesn't know where to find him. And after a while he decides it's not worth it. Because he, he spent a bit of maths, so he's like eh, it's not really worth it, I can't find this player. I guess I just need to look for new avenues of players I can shoot at. Right, so notice how he gets a uns he tries to go for unsuspecting shots and players who just glided in. And he sees some har uh, loot ahead of him. Now that harpoon is really paying off. Because A, he gets really good wood. Right? And he gets 410 metal and max floppers. Now that in itself is going to pay off a lot ahead. And he sees some more loot there and he sees a big pot in there. He wants to grab that because he needs to, you know, top off that full shield. And this is where the harpoon really shines in. It gives you the ability to take the rewards without actually going for the risk, right? Because you want to kill someone for their loot, right? Now the harpoon allows other people to kill the person and you just join the loot at the end of the day. Right, so now he realizes he has 410 metal and he's waiting for his zone to pull, right? Because this is going to be his first moving zone, so he wants to know which direction it's going to go. So it pulls back and he checks ahead, right? And he sees that it's relatively congested, right? So he slowly starts taking walls, right? And he has 17 seconds before his zone starts pulling. Which is how he burns mats, getting a full tunnel in so that he can recycle his mats from early on. Now he's looking on six floppers, and these floppers will be key in ensuring that he makes it in a to end game. Now he drops to low ground and he never takes mid ground. Why? Because when you ho you can't really hold the walls on high ping and if he gets full, if he accidentally becomes second high, it will be a huge problem for him. Makes a good rotate in. This is, this is where all those hours practicing those tunnels in creative really pays off because the ability being able to do this efficiently without having to worry on each step enables you to make better plays, right? And also it, it buys you time. So Carl here trying to look to focus that and notice how like by just staying in his box and doing some editing, he has created three layers instead of just one wall between him and Carl. Right? There's a staircase outside, there's a wall, and there's a ramp that is flipped inside. Oh wait, not a ramp, a cone that is flipped inside. So he uses his edits to create uh, a layer of protection for him so that he does not, you know, get focused by this call person, maybe get accidentally dinked and then Carl just psychos him and then his game's over, right? Now we look at zone, a zone pulls towards the form, right? It goes, it pulls to the left to right here, right? So 
um, Doom's going to be looking to rotate in there right now. Now the question is, is he going to use, is he going to late rotate and use his pad? But the thing is, he can't really do that because A, it's going to be really congested because there's a, he's playing low ground right now, right? And that means that mid ground will become second height and second height will become second -ish, ish more height and then height will become ultimate right so he doesn't want to take that uh he goes ahead and he just focuses on rotating it's looking for mat refreshes because his mats aren't looking that good right now right and it's only the seventh zone right here he's still decent on mats but he's not as good as he could be right and now he's taking his time because he's able to use side snow egos lair and able to get in right and notice how he makes like a mistake here where he forgot, forgets to ramp himself from the back just in case someone takes his tarp but then he places a ramp again and that ensures that he will not get shot from the back he drops down floors and you co and he does it like a cone and that's it he doesn't place a floor because the cone is very multi-purpose right it allows you to a peak b it allows you to use it as a stand by a roof right just if you're not getting sprayed so a cone is a really good thing to place towards end game because it saves you a lot of mats and it can serve multiple functions because you can't really uh peek through a flat but you can you can peek through a cone Right, so see the retina in returning in front of him, tries to go for the kill, but there's already a lot of space created in between him and him. And now he makes the call to go for the rotate through launch pad. Right, and now he would have made a made it a lot more further, right? Had it not been for that floor, it takes fall damage, is forced to pop a flop. Good peace control right there, right? Because he wants to deny this halal flash player to get away and he wants to secure the kill because a mat refresh would give him 15 extra builds and that's 36 and that would instantly enable him to maybe even contest height, right? So. Really good peace control, unfortunately Halal Flash owns the wall behind this and he's not able to trap him in and use the staircase edit to get the kill on him. He branches out because the zone is pulling towards the corn stock and he's rotating towards zone. He's not using uh, the most mat efficient tunnel but he, he, needs, he needs to create space for himself right because there's so much going on if he takes like a ramp and um, a wall if he tries to rotate in like that it's gonna mess him up because if someone just jumps into his box he has no cover to build right a box if someone just jumps into his, his ramp and a wall thing he has no cover to work with but if someone jumps into his box he can work with uh, cones or ramps gets the face in here hits him for a hundred right and instantly gets pushed by a guy who dings him on the head Right, so he goes from 60, dings and hits him body shot, right? But instead of going for the ramp flip edit like most players will, he realizes that he has floppers and now he will go for the zone play. Right, so now this player is out of AR ammo, right? So he just rotates to the right here. And then side snow ego here is the player right here who pushed him is forced to rotate here. Because he does not have floppers, but our boy TR Doomed has floppers. Pops minis and zones. His first flopper doesn't go through and he cuts it awfully close. Pops another flopper. Pops another flopper. Has no bills here. And this right here is a really good impact frag. And notice he has zero kills till now. Gets a kill on that. Who is that? That is, I think, RZ Devil, the player he met at Dirty Dogs earlier. Now, this player, he's packing a lot of good stuff, but most importantly, he's packing two things. Floppers and the Grappler. The Grappler and Floppers are the best playmakers in the game. 
tries to go for a rotate, gets lucky because no one is currently on height, gets hit by LND Sami for a bit of damage. It's a 1v1v1. Applies pressure from top, right? Goes for the shotgun shot because it's only three tiles up. Shotgun still does damage in the ranges of 40 to 50, right? Hits a very lucky dink right here, right? Drops down, tarps ahead just in case, right? Because he does not want to worry about tarping. Hits a really good shot on LND Sami and closes out the victory royale. At the start of this game, his points were 13. End of the game? 54 and that's just two kills right now if let's say if uh, he were to play a bit more aggressive like let's say if he got a heavy snipe and he cycled into people's boxes this number could have been a lot bigger but this number would have stayed the same why because victory royales and top twos are still much more important as compared to kills so that's all it's been for me today if you guys did like the video please drop a like and subscribe and share with your friends and I'll see you guys next time. Later.